Hey, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I am here to share my favorite nonfiction reads of 2017. These were not all published in 2017. I will let you know what year they were published. Um, there are 12 of them, so let's just jump right in, and I'm going to be brief, but these are all great reads if you're looking for some nonfiction to get into. The first one is um, Svetlana Alexievich, Chernobyl Prayer, and I should say these are not in order of how much I like them except for I will tell you which is my absolute all-time favorite um, for the year at least. <laughs> Chernobyl Prayer is um, I think it's a must read. It is um, she interviewed just people from all walks of life that were affected by the Chernobyl disaster and her writing is so gorgeous um, and so heartbreaking and she just um, some of it is very poetic some of it is very narrative um, and it just really pulls you in and tears you apart um, but it's important it's really important so I highly recommend this book and it was um, published in 97 originally and translated in 2016 the next one is Science Related, The Sixth Extinction by Elizabeth Colbert. This is an unnatural history, and apparently it won the Pulitzer. Um, this one, I was kind of hesitant, um, not that I didn't want to read it, but I thought it was going to be a complete downer because it's talking about how humans are affecting their environment in, you know, causing all these extinctions which it is but she writes it is so interesting um, it's not just about modern extinction she talks about you know extinctions within the fossil record and each chapter she focuses on a different extinction and the reasons why and it's just she she pulls in some modern history to go along you know social history it's just I thought it was a fascinating read, and not all the chapters were, oh, we're killing our earth. I mean, that is the overarching idea, but uh, it's written in a way that's very accessible and interesting and hopeful. So, another great read. These are all so great. Um, the next one is another little science read, A Sting in the Tail by Dave Goulson. This is about bumblebees, and I loved it so much. Um, Dave Golson is a professor and he studies beads and he just is so delighted with the natural world. It just oozes out of his pages. So these are all the different studies he's gone on in different parts of the world. Um, he's originally um, um, based in the UK and I think now he's in France. I'm really looking forward to I'm looking at it I have it facing me a buzz in the meadow which is he's bought a tract of land in France and is letting it go fallow and is gonna write all about you know what happens with the flowers and the insects and I can't wait so yes <sighs> loved it loved it and gosh I want it spring to get here <laughs> so cold here um, and then we have some narrative nonfiction which I'm really loving so Douglas Preston, The Lost City of the Monkey God. I will definitely be looking out for any nonfiction that Douglas Preston puts out because he's a great writer. Um, he and another one that I'll talk about later are both so good at taking a topic. So this one is um, an ancient civilization that was discovered in a very thick rainforest in Honduras and just finding it, so the technology of finding it, and um, just the idea that a civilization could be discovered at this point in time, like we think we've discovered everything and there's still things out there that we don't know, and talking about, you know, the diseases and parasites in Central America, I mean, it's just, he just incorporates so many aspects of the area, socially and scientifically, medically, anything he could think of. They just melded it all together into the story and it's just fascinating. I thoroughly enjoyed it. 
and I have a personal connection to it because I've lived in Honduras and my son is um, his dad's Honduran so great read great read um, Hidden Figures by Margalee Shutterly this is phenomenal highly recommend this one as well these are the women that crunched the numbers to get the NASA program and all those rockets up in the air prior to computers and um, with the um, first coming in of com the computer age and how they learned to program them and it was just so enlightening on you know racism and so empowering for uh, culturally and with women as well just can't say enough great things about it and my son and I went and saw the movie together and he was so impressed we walked out of the theater and he said wow mom things were sure different back then weren't they and I don't know I just am so so grateful that Margalee Shetterly took the time to write this book it is brilliant okay and then we have Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI. This was by David Grant, and this is another, the other one that I will definitely be looking out for more of his work. He's another great narrative nonfiction writer that just pulls in all these different aspects. So this one is a series of murders um, with the Osage Indian tribe and the oil industry um, with F FDR back when the FBI was first created so you know he's got the the things that were done to the the Native American tribe and you know how the FBI came into being and how they started using the new um, t technology um, bit by bit and just interweaving all these different aspects into this great storyline it was very interesting I learned a lot so enjoyed that one then we've got my girl Amy Tan I love her I love her I've read all of her books this year I mean I read all the ones I hadn't read before so I have completed her backlist um, with the exception of her new nonfiction that just came out this year but her novels was what I was focusing on um, this this year this past year um, but this is a nonfiction piece obviously um, and it's not necessarily a memoir it sort of is but it's it's just a collection of essays she wrote magazine articles introductions to other people's books um, her own books uh, journal entries you know travel diaries all sorts of different things and if you've read I, I would suggest you don't have to read her books but if you've read her first three um, you will see a lot of her life in those books by reading this so there are little bits of autobiographical aspects in all of her fiction writing and you'll find that out either with her or her mother um, but I just really, really relate to this woman. Her writing is gorgeous, but the way she thinks and, you know, oh, oh, she's fabulous. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot to tell you the years. I'll tell you that at the end. Um, March, this is a trilogy, graphic novel series. Um, these are they're so, it's a memoir of John Lewis, who is, um, he spoke at the um, I Have a Dream speech that time, and he's, I think, the last one living that was speaking there, and he's a U.S. Senator now, and this series starts out when he's a child, and progresses through and bits of it are with the Obama um, inauguration flash forwards and backs and whatnot um, but just the brilliance of his story his life story and this fabulous artist and the writer I've 
Nate Powell and um, Andrew Aiden. I'm not sure which is which, but um, the combination of the three is just brilliant. The story, you learn so much about the civil rights movement, so much, and the emotional impact of the way it's written and the illustrations. And one thing that stuck out to me is the way they use music. It's just, it's just a great read. I highly recommend this. I think it had like a 4.7 rating on Goodreads too, this series. So I'm not the only one that thinks it's brilliant. Another great one that I read right at the end was Lab Girl by Hope Jaron. This is a memoir. Um, Hope Jaron is a botanist, and this is about her, you know, going to college and, you know, getting into the field as a professor and her case studies and a dear friend that she makes along the way and eventually getting married and having a child of her own. And it's just great. Um, the science is fairly low key. It's not very heavy. It's more of a memoir. Um, but the thing that really stuck out to me is how inspirational this is. So you could totally read it a chapter at a time. Like I can see reading it through to enjoy it and then going back, you know, a couple years later and reading it through a chapter at a time and just, you know, pondering her thoughts because she's, she writes on a very inspirational level. So great book. It's also great. And then we have another memoir, Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson girl is funny she cracks me up and she writes so openly about her life and her struggles with mental illness and how crippling it can be but how she's um, learned to focus on the good times she doesn't say that she's conquered her illness um, it's a chronic problem but she's learned to focus on the good times and to have those moments carry her through. And it's just another, another inspiring work. You know, you can't, you can't read it and not think, gosh, I need to work on being happy. Um, I love this book. And I've said this before, but if you're going to read Jenny Lawson, you should start with this one because this is by far the best and it won't spoil the others for you. So, yeah. And then, um... The last two are on my son's phone because I don't have them at the moment. A Full Life Reflections at, is it Reflections? Yeah, Reflections at 90 by Jimmy Carter. This is, this is a memoir as well and he's written several memoirs. So this one is just a collection of, you know, things that he wanted to write down and remember or he wanted us to remember. So. There are bits about his childhood, bits about um, his life in the military as a nuclear submarine, whatever you call it, Captain, I don't know. Um, really interesting bits about racism in the South and um, the differences in approach between his mother and father, um, his marriage, very open and honest about um, some moments with his wife where, you know, he acted very patriarchal and realized in later years that, gosh, I should have asked her first. Um, it's just, he is a lovely man. This is, he's just so wise and insightful and he's lived such a rich life. Wow. And then the other one, this is definitely my number one nonfiction read of the year. I read this last year and I got it for my son for Christmas and I read it right after Christmas and I knew that he read the audiobook himself so I wanted to hear him read it. It is that good. I was just ready to reread this book and I tracked it down. You have to. It's an Audible exclusive so I got a free trial from Audio, Audible to listen to it. And I think I'm gonna keep the Audible free trial for one more month because there's another exclusive that I wanna to listen to for Black History Month and then I'm probably gonna drop it because I can get most of the books that I want from the public library. But um, 
Trevor Noah is born a crime. If I'm just gonna cry even talking about him. <laughs> if you haven't read this book, why not? I mean, first off, his reading it himself is brilliant. The man is brilliant and he is so, his outlook on life, the things he's gone through in his life and to have the outlook that he has, <sighs> the man is something else. So this is Trevor Noah, who was um, a native South African, is his mother, um, from the T Tosa tribe. I think that's the way they say it. I, I, you have to click to say it, and I can't do that, but they, they say it Tosa-ish. And his father was a Swiss German, white man. And so when he was born, it was a criminal offense to have had sexual relationships mixed between the races. So he was literally born a crime. And he goes through apartheid his first like five years of life, and then apartheid begins falling apart. So you, you just learn all about how that apartheid worked and how that form of racism worked and um, how it fell apart and how... Um, South Africa evolved after that, and you learn so much about this is a coming-of-age novel and, you know, the trials he goes through before he realizes, you know, the, the path he needs to be on, the one he's on isn't the right one, and he needs to change his ways. Um, thoughts on faith. His mother is very religious and very faithful, and, you know, his his stories on that are just very interesting um and chapter three is the funniest thing i've ever read in my life i die i die even thinking about it um and his relationship with his mother and the things that she does and the way she raises him oh my gosh this book you've got to read it you just you just all have to read it there is so much in here to think about and i cry I cry. So anyway, those are my nonfiction reads and now I'm gonna get busy with the fiction ones because those were great too. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye!